Good morning, everybody, and thank you for joining me again. My name is Michael. Uh, we're continuing in the reading of the Word of God. We are in the book of Exodus, a little bit over halfway through now. Um, I do apologize if I start to get a little gurgly or sniffly. I've started to get a little sick, unfortunately, so I'm staying home from work today. I'm getting this actually started a little bit later. It's only 6 in the morning right now. Um, but it's not going to stop me. Words got to be spread. Words got to be preached out. Especially in our trying times right now. Um, so I just want to make sure to get these out. Oh, excuse me. But I'm, I'm okay. It's just a little bit of a sickness. But all things you do and joyfully. Suffering and joy happiness and joy everything that we give because i'm alive i'm breathing i'm here so i'm i'm joyful and i'm grateful and thankful and all things the good and the bad because it usually the bad's not so bad but we come out and in the tests of fire and come out better for it in the end um but we left off in chapter 27 so we'll be resuming from chapter 28 this morning in the book of exodus um we only have about 13 12 more chapters to go um and then we'll be getting on to the book of leviticus um basically where we left off moses is still on top of mount sinai um during those 40 days and 40 nights <clears throat> getting all of the laws and the rules for the people of Israel. Um, getting ready to go on to the priest garments and what they're supposed to be wearing. We just read about the, the courts and the tabernacle and how they're supposed to be built in specifications. I showed you yesterday um, a little depiction of them. Hopefully you were able to research and find some videos that might have given you a better, clearer picture of how it was all set up um would have been amazing to see yeah anyways mine's a little foggy apologize if i get a little blah but um yes so we're going to go ahead and continue from chapter 28 and do 28 29 and 30 today um Yeah, and then tomorrow we'll be getting into um, Moses coming back down from Mount Sinai and seeing the people of Israel just totally averting from what they originally said they would. Everything that they that God said that they that needed to be done, they would do, and you got people down there that were not doing what they were supposed to be doing. Well, we'll get to there. So anyways, continuing from chapter 28 in the book of Exodus, this is the priest garments. Then bring near to you Aaron and your brother and his sons with him from among the people of Israel to serve me as priests. Aaron and Aaron's sons, Nadab and Abihu, and Eleazar and Ithamar. And you shall make holy garments for Aaron, your brother, for glory and for beauty. You shall speak to all the skillful whom I have filled with the spirit of skill, that they make Aaron's garments to consecrate him for my priesthood. These are the garments that they shall make, a breast, a breast piece, an ephod, a robe, a coat of checkerwork, a turban, and a sash. They shall make holy garments for Aaron, your brother, and his sons to serve me as priests. They shall receive gold, blue, and purple, and scarlet yarns, and fine twined linen, and they shall make thee a thought of gold, of blue and purple and scarlet yarns, and of fine twined linen, skillfully worked. They shall have two shoulder pieces attached to its two edges, so that it may be joined together. And the skillfully woven band on it shall be made like it, it be made like it, and be one of the pieces with it, of gold, blue, and purple and scarlet yarns, and fine twined linen. You shall take two onyx stones and engrave on them the names of the sons of Israel. Six of their names on one stone, and the names of the remaining six on the other stone, in the order of their birth. As a, Jew, as a jeweler engraves signets, so shall you engrave the two stones with the names of the sons of Israel. 
You shall enclose them in settings of gold filigree, and you shall set the two stones on the shoulder pieces of the ephod as stones of remembrance for the sons of Israel. And Aaron shall bear their names before the Lord on his two shoulders for remembrance. You shall make settings of gold filigree and two chains of pure gold, twisted like cords, and you shall attach the cords' chains to the settings. You shall make a breast piece of judgment and skilled work. In the style of a fod, you shall make it of gold, blue, and purple, and scarlet yarns. In fine twine linen shall you make it. It shall be square and doubled, a span its length and a span its breadth. You shall set it in four rows of stones, a row of sardius, topaz, and carbon carbuncle shall be the first row, and the second row an emerald, a sapphire, and a diamond, and on the third row a jacinth, an agate, and an amethyst, and the fourth row a beryl, an onyx, and a jasper. They shall be set in gold filigree. There shall be twelve stones with their names according to the names of the sons of Israel. They shall be like signets, each engraved with its name, for the twelve tribes. You shall make for the breastpiece twisted chains like cords of pure gold, and you shall make for the breastpiece two rings of gold, and put in two rings on the two edges of the breastpiece. And you shall put the two cords of gold in the two rings at the edge of the breastpiece. The two ends of the cords you shall attach to the settings of filigree, and so attach in front of the to, to the in front to the shoulder pieces of the ephod. You shall make two rings of the and put them <coughs> at the two ends of the breastpiece. On its edge, on its inside edge, next to the ephod, you shall make two rings of gold and attach them in front to the lower part of the two shoulder pieces of the ephod at its seam above the skillfully woven band of the ephod. And they shall bind the breast piece by its rings to the rings of the ephod with a lace of blue, so that it may lie on the skillfully woven band on the ephod, so that the breast pieces shall not come loose from the ephod. So Aaron shall bear the names of the sons of Israel and the breastpiece of judgment on his heart. When he goes into the holy place to bring them to regular remembrance before the Lord, and in the breastpiece of judgment you shall put the Urim and the Thummim in, and they shall be on Aaron's heart when he goes in before the Lord. Thus Aaron shall bear the judgment of the people of Israel on his heart before the Lord regularly. You shall make the robe of the ephod all of blue, it shall have an opening of the head for the head in the middle of it, with a woven binding above the around the opening, like the opening in a garment, so that it may not tear. On its hem you shall make pomegranates of blue and purple and scarlet yarns around its hem, with bells of gold between them, a golden bell and a pomegranate, a golden bell and a pomegranate around the hem of the robe, and it shall be on Aaron when he ministers and its sound shall be heard when he goes into the holy place before the Lord, and when he comes out, so that he does not die. You shall make a plate of pure gold and engrave on it, like the engraving of a signet, holy to the Lord. And you shall fasten it on the turban of a, by a cord of blue. It shall be on the front of the turban. It shall be on Aaron's forehead, and Aaron shall bear any guilt from the holy things that the people of Israel consecrate as their holy gifts. It shall regularly be on his forehead, that they may be accepted before the Lord. You shall weave the coat and checker work of fine linen, and you shall make a turban of fine linen, and you shall make a sash embroidered with needlework. For Aaron's sons you shall make coats and sashes and caps. You shall make them for glory and beauty, and you shall put them on, the, on Aaron your brother, and on his sons with him. You shall anoint them and ordain them and consecrate them, that they may serve me as priests. You shall make for them linen undergarments to cover their naked flesh. They shall reach from the hips to the thighs, and they shall be on Aaron and on his sons when they go into the tent of meeting, or when they come near the altar to minister in the holy place, lest they bear guilt and die. There shall be a statue forever for him and for his offspring after him. Chapter 29. Consecration of the Priests Now this is what you shall do to that. Now this is what you shall do to them to consecrate them, that they may serve me as priests. Take one bull of the herd and two rams without blemish, and unleavened bread, unleavened cakes mixed with oil, and unleavened wafers smeared with oil. You shall make them of fine wheat flour. You shall put them in one basket and bring them in the basket, and bring the bull and the two rams. 
You shall bring Aaron and his sons to the entrance of the tent of meeting and wash with them with water. Then you shall take the garments and put on the Aaron, and put on Aaron the coat and the robe of the ephod, and the ephod and the breastpiece, and gird him with the skillfully woven band of ephod, of the ephod. And you shall set the turban on his head and put the holy crown on the turban. You shall take the anointing oil and pour it on his head and anoint him. Then you shall bring his sons and put coats on them. And you shall gird Aaron and his sons and sashes and bind caps on them. And the priesthood shall be theirs by the statute forever. Thus you shall ordain, ordain Aaron and his sons. Then you shall bring the bull before the tent of meeting. Aaron and his sons shall lay their hands on the head of the bull. Then you shall kill the bull before the Lord at the entrance of the tent of meeting. And, take, and shall take part of the blood of the bull and put it on the horns of the altar with your finger. And the rest of the blood you shall pour out at the base of the altar. And you shall take all the fat that covers the entrails, and the long robe of the liver, and the two kidneys with the fat that is on them, and burn them on the altar. But the flesh of the bull and its skin and its dung you shall burn with the fire outside the camp. It is a sin offering. You shall take one of the rams and Aaron, and his son shall lay their hands on the head of the ram. And you shall kill the ram, and shall take its blood and throw it against the sides of the altar. Then you shall cut the ram into pieces and wash its entrails and its legs, and put them with its pieces in its head, and burn the whole ram on the altar. It is a burnt offering to the Lord. It is a pleasing aroma, a food offering to the Lord. You shall take the other ram, and Aaron and his son shall lay their hands on the head of the ram, and you should kill and you shall kill the ram and take part of its blood and put it on the tip of the right ear of Aaron and on the tips of the right ears of his sons and on the thumbs of their right hands and on the great toes of their right feet and throw the rest of the blood against the side of the altar then you shall take part of the blood that is on the altar and of the anointing oil and sprinkle it on Aaron and his garments and on his sons and his sons garments with him he and his garments shall be holy, and his sons and his son's garments with him. You shall also take the fat from the ram and take and the fat tail and the fat that covers the entrails, and the long robe of the river and liver and the two kidneys with the fat that is on them, and the right thigh, for it is a ram of ordination, the one loaf of bread and one cake of bread made with oil, and one wafer out of the basket of unleavened bread that is before the Lord. You shall put all these on the palms of Aaron and on the palms of his sons, and wave them for a wave offering before the Lord. Then you shall take them for their hands, from their hands and burn them on the altar on top of the burnt offering as a pleasing aroma before the Lord. It is a food offering to the Lord. You shall take the breast of the ram of Aaron's ordination and wave it for a wave offering before the Lord, and it shall be your portion. And you shall consecrate the breast of the wave offering that it is waved in the thigh of the priest's portion that is contributed from the ram of ordination. From what was Aaron's and his sons, it shall be for Aaron and his sons as a perpetual, as perpetual due from the people of Israel. For it is a contribution. It shall be a contribution from the people of Israel from their peace offerings, their contribution to the Lord. The holy garments of Aaron shall be for his sons and after him for his sons after him. They shall be anointed in them and ordained in them. The son who succeeds him as priest, who comes into the tent of meeting to minister in the holy place, shall wear them seven days. You shall take the ram of ordination and boil its flesh in the holy place. And Aaron and his son shall eat the flesh of the ram and the bread that is in the basket in the entrance of the tent of meeting. They shall eat those things with which atonement was made at their ordination and consecration. But an outsider shall not eat of them, because they are holy. And if any of the flesh are ordinate, for the ordination or of the bread remain until the morning, then you shall burn the remainder with fire. It shall not be eaten, because it is holy. Thus you shall do to Aaron and his to his sons, according to all that I have commanded you. Through seven days shall you ordain them, and every day you shall offer a bull as a sin offering for atonement. Also you shall purify the altar when you make atonement for it, and shall anoint it to consecrate it. Seven days you shall make atonement for the altar and consecrate it, and the altar shall be most holy. Whatever touches the altar shall become holy. Now this is what you shall offer on the altar, two lambs a year old, day by day, regularly. One lamb you shall offer in the morning, and the other lamb you shall offer at twilight. 
and with the first lamb a tenth measure of fine flour mingled with a fourth of a hen of beaten oil, and a fourth of a hen of wine for a drink offering. The other lamb you shall offer at twilight, and shall offer it with it a grain offering and its drink offering, as in the morning for a pleasing aroma. A food offering to the Lord it shall be a regular burnt offering throughout your generations at the entrance of the tent of meeting before the Lord, where I will meet with you to speak to you there. There I will meet with the people of Israel, and it shall be sanctified by my glory. I will consecrate the tent of meeting in the altar. Aaron also and his sons I will consecrate to serve me as priests. I will dwell among the people of Israel, and will be their God. And they shall know that I am the Lord their God, who brought them out of the land of Egypt, that I might dwell among them. I am the Lord their God. And chapter 30, the altar of incense. You shall make an altar on which to burn incense. You shall make it of acacia wood. A cubit shall be its length and a cubit its breadth. It shall be square and two cubits shall be its height. Its horn shall be of one piece with it. You shall overlay it with pure gold, its top and around its sides and its horns. You shall make a molding of gold around it and you shall make two golden rings for it. Under its molding on two opposite sides of it you shall make them, and they shall be holders for poles with which to carry it. You shall make the poles of acacia wood with the, and overlay them with gold. And you shall put it in front of the veil and is above the ark of the testimony, in front of the mercy seat that is above the testimony, where I will meet with you. And Aaron shall burn fra fragrant incense on it. Every morning when he dresses the lamps he shall burn it, and when Aaron sets up the lamps at twilight he shall burn it. A regular incense offering before the Lord throughout your generations. You shall not offer unauthorized incense on it, or a burnt offering, or a grain offering, and you shall not pour a drink offering on it. Aaron shall make atonement on its horns once a year, with the blood of the sin offering of atonement. He shall make atonement for it once in the year throughout your generations. It is most holy to the Lord. The Lord said to Moses, When you take the census of, census of the people of Israel, then each shall give a ransom for his life to the Lord, when you number them. Let there be no plague among them when you number them. Each one who is numbered in the census, census shall give his half a shekel according to the shekel of the sanctuary. The shekel is twenty giras, half a shekel as an offering to the Lord. Everyone who is numbered at Everyone who is numbered in the census, from twenty years old and upward, shall give the Lord's offering. The rich shall not give more, and the poor shall not give less than the half shekel. When you give the Lord's offering to make atonement for your lives, you shall take the atonement money from the people of Israel, and shall give it for the service of the tent of meeting, that it may bring the people of Israel to remembrance before the Lord, so as to make atonement for their lives. And the Lord said to Moses, You shall also make a basin of bronze. With its stand of bronze for washing, you shall put it between the tent of meeting and the altar, and you shall put water in it, with which Aaron and his son shall wash their hands and their feet. When they go into the tent of meeting, or when they come near the altar to the minister, to burn a food offering to the Lord, they shall wash with water so that they may not die. They shall wash their hands and their feet so that they may not die. It shall be a statute forever to them, even to him and to his offspring throughout their generations. And the Lord said to Moses, Take the finest spices of liquid myrrh, five hundred shekels, and of sweet-smelling cinnamon, half as much, that is two fifty and two fifty of aromic cane, and five hundred of cassia, according to the shekel of the sanctuary, and a hen of olive oil. And you shall make of these a sacred anointing oil, blended it, blended as by the pure perf perfumer. It shall be a holy anointing oil. With it you shall anoint the tent of meeting and the ark of the testimony, and the table of all that its utensils and the lampstand and its utensils and the altar of incense, and the altar of burnt offering with all its utensils and the basin and its stand. You shall consecrate them, that they may be most holy. Whatever touches them will become holy. You shall anoint Aaron and his sons, and consecrate them, as they may serve me as priests. And you shall say to the people of Israel, This shall be my holy anointing oil throughout your generations. It shall not be poured on the body of an ordinary person, 
and you shall make no other like it in, comp in composition. It is holy, and it shall be holy to you. Whoever compounds any like it, or whoever puts, off, puts any of it on an outsider, shall be cut off from his people. The Lord said to Moses, Take sweet spices, stacti and an ancha, and galbanum, sweet spices with pure frankincense, for each shall be an equal part, and make an incense blended as by the pure perfumer. Seasoned with salt, pure and holy, you shall beat some of it with very small, and put part of it before the testimony in the tenth meeting, where I shall meet with you. It shall be most holy for you, and the incense that you shall make according to its composition, you shall not make for yourselves. It shall be for you, holy to the Lord. Whoever makes any like it to use as perfume shall be cut off from his people. <laughs> Sorry, excuse me. Um, so that is going to be the end of our reading this morning. Um, just looking back on it, I mean, they've definitely got a lot of things that they need to do that's a requirement of God. But, you know, what I take back from this and everything in there is that I shall meet with you. You had God coming down from the heavens and meeting with them, being there, present with them. We have the Holy Spirit with us, but man, just to, just to have God, like, there. Like, I don't understand how these people just couldn't. It baffles my brain. I just, it just is something that I just don't understand in a, an area of, of all that they had seen. All, all, you know, we, today, there are miracles out there. Miracles still happen, absolutely. And I don't deny that whatsoever. I am a miracle in myself. But to have these things shown, be seen by their eyes, happening, all of the promises given, and still just turn away is just, it baffles my brain. I don't understand. But that is the way that it went, and God knew the way that it was going to go, and Everything works out for the better of it, as you'll read through when we go through the remaining amount of the Old Testament. But continue to read on your own, getting into the Word of God, understanding the connections between the Old and the New Testament. Um, I'll let you go this morning now. It's actually quite a long video. I'm surprised it took that long. Probably because I'm, I don't know. But I do thank you very much for joining me this morning. I love you. God bless you. And I will see you tomorrow.